Hello, my name is Jason Eisner. I'm the director of Hobo with a Shotgun, and I'm standing here with the captain, David Brunt. Dan Brunt, everybody. David, as you know, played the original hobo and one of the dirty cops in the movie. Oh, dirty cops! So we asked you guys to submit questions, and we did our best to pick the top three, or at least the ones that we thought we could uh, answer really well and be interesting for you guys. So the first question comes from Earl Guthrow who asked, there's bound to have been many surreal moments where you thought to yourself, I'm actually doing this. Which one of those stands out the most? So for you, Dave, what were some of the most memorable moments for you on set? Uh, the most memorable moments for me on set was uh, meeting Rooker Har, and uh, Rooker Har took me out for coffee, and, and we talked about whales and sea life. And me and Rooker Har were just like brothers. We, you know, we get along great. And you also got the opportunity to play a cop in the film. What was that like? Oh, uh, that was pretty good. That was one of, one of my lifelong dreams was to be a police officer. Your only chance to leave alive! For me, probably the most memorable moment of being on set was the very last day of shooting. It was the one day that wasn't stressful or insane on set. We had a really small crew and we got to go out and ride the rails and ride a train, which was the opening scene of the movie. Um, it's the opening credit sequence. We had the whole day to basically shoot it. We only had to get a couple shots. I can remember just sitting on the train and I'm looking around and I see I've got all my friends in the boxcar with me. Rugger is having the time of his life. The conductor allows him to drive the train himself. And uh, I'm sitting there and I'm watching my DOP, Kareem Hussain, film Rugger. And it was the first time I had a moment to just kind of like sit back and realize like what has happened. And oh, and we have a special guest, my uh, my cat Jacob. Hey, bud. How you doing? All right. So the next question is from Melanie Eldridge, who asked, "Your film had some distinct pieces of Canadian nostalgia that really struck a chord with me, and surely many others as well. Certain little things were a total delight to encounter, particularly the end credit song Run with Us, and also your choice to use the Bricklin as Slick and Ivan's car. How much specific thought went into these choices, and how challenging were these things to dig up?" Where did you get the Bricklin, and how much did it take to fix it up? Lisa Lowe's Run With Us is just something that just really speaks to our childhood. And making this film, John Davies, the writer and I, we were kind of running the movie from the 13-year-old perspective inside us who grew up watching like 80s cartoons. And one of our favorite 80s cartoons was The Raccoons, which dealt with really dark themes. It had, uh, you know, it dealt with environmental and corporation issues. And it was like really strong material for kids. And it had a dark feeling to it, and it had this pumping song for the, the opening credit sequence. It just felt right. It felt like it just it was an, a great way to kind of wrap up the whole film. And also, the movie kind of ends on a downer, but I feel like that song just kind of gets you pumped up. The Bricklin, the car that we use for Ivan and Slick's vehicle, is a maritime vehicle. It was actually made in St. John's, New Brunswick. It was built between the years 1974 and 1976. There's only like 2,800 of them made. The producer of the film, Rob Cotterill, he's actually from St. John, New Brunswick. Because that car is just so cool looking, and it just has such a great like 80s vibe to it with the gull wing doors on it. And I just thought it was a great way to feature a maritime vehicle that we all grew up and loved. And the very first day that we shot with that vehicle, our stunt performer took the car really hot around the corner and he ended up destroying the hubcap, uh, popping the tires, and it bent the back axle of that car. It was, it was somewhat difficult for us to find because there's, there's not too many of them left. And uh, we were lucky to be able to find a white and black one uh, in New Brunswick, which we rented. Next question is from Tito Total Bastard, who asks, Dave, what do you think of Tito Total Bastard? Oh, it's different, all right. It's a weird name. Yeah, it's different. That's answer his question. <laughs> so we thought this was probably the most fun question to answer, and we're going to be able to give you guys a little treat with this question. So we made this like the grand prize winning question, which is also a spoiler question. So if you haven't seen the movie, turn this off and then come back to it after you've seen the movie. Tito's question, is Rip going to keep on plaguing it solo or is he going to come after Abby and give her some sort of badass armor and chainsaw arm? Tito, you're not too far off from our imaginations. Uh, basically, we wrote and we shot an alternate ending to this movie 
which involved Abby uh, being captured by Rip, one of the plague members, and held in a chamber uh, inside their crypt where she's being transformed into one of the plague members. And she doesn't get a chainsaw arm, but she does get uh, a quadruple shotgun barrel arm. It was a lot of fun to shoot the scene, but when I was cutting the film together, it just didn't feel right to put after the scene where the hobo gets taken down. Because for us, when the grizzly bear gets shot dead, so does the movie. The movie's over at that point. So you can look for that, this scene probably on the deleted scenes on the DVD and Blu-ray. I want to thank all you guys for submitting your questions. They're all awesome. I wish we had time to answer them all. And if you dig the movie, I hope you guys support it. The amount of support you guys have been giving us so far has just been so amazing and overwhelming. And we're trying our best to fill the DVD and Blu-ray up with as much extra material as we possibly can. Some of it, which you're seeing, I'm cutting into this little piece. And uh, we're going to leave you guys off with one final shot of my amazing cat, Jacob, jumping off the roof of my house. Thank you, guys. Jacob, 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 Jacob,